Here we're taking a look at symmetry. We're introducing the topic of symmetry in two-dimensional FEA trust problems. All right, so the first question we have to ask is, can symmetry be used? And if we look at a problem like this, here we have a truss here, we have some forces here applied, some nodes at the top there, those are X and Y directions. We want to run through a series of checks. And so the following must be symmetric about an axis of symmetry or mirrored about the axis of symmetry in order for symmetry to be used. Basic symmetry at this point. So first, is the geometry symmetric about that axis? So in this case, it would be the truss arrangement. Is the stiffness symmetric? In other words, are these stiffness values of these elements the same as what we have over there? Is the loading symmetric, the location and the direction and the magnitude? And then finally, are the constraints symmetric? And so in this case, we can take a look that the geometry is indeed symmetric about the y-axis. The stiffness is going to be the same for each of those elements. The loading is going to be the same direction here, that there and there, same magnitude, same location. And the constraints are also going to be symmetric. So for this example problem, we can go ahead and say it is symmetric. Let's go ahead and create an equivalent symmetric model. So first we take a look at the geometry and stiffness. Looking at our model again, we go ahead and split it down the axis of symmetry. We say that the elastic modulus cross-sectional area are the same for all bars. And we just draw one part of it left or the right side. In this case, we chose the right side. And notice that the elastic modulus is still the same for all the bars. Cross-sectional area is the same for all the bars with one exception, and that is the bar lying right along that axis of symmetry. And so in this case, we use half of the area because we assume that bar itself is split right down that axis of symmetry. So in this case, we would only use one half of the area there. That's the key that we want to take away in case we're, we're doing a symmetric problem and there happens to be a bar lying right along that axis of symmetry. Next thing is looking at loading. And so there's our model again. Here's some example loads. We're going to have P, P, and 2P right along that axis symmetry. And when we go ahead and create the symmetric model, note that P, or pardon me, the load there has been reduced from 2P to P because it's halved. So just like the previous slide where we said that the cross-sectional area for any bar line right along the axis of symmetry gets halved. The same is true for any loads line along the axis of symmetry. Next thing is we take a look at the constraints. And so there's our model again. There's our loads. And now we go ahead and apply our constraints. So when we go ahead and create our reduced model. We have our loads there. And first thing we do is we keep all the original constraints that are off the axis of symmetry. So in this case, that roller constraint that we have there on the right side gets propagated over to the symmetric model. And then we apply the constraints along the axis of symmetry. And so what does that mean? Well, it means that it cannot cross the axis of symmetry, but it can slide along the axis of symmetry. And so in order to represent that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create at each of these nodes here is we're gonna go ahead and create roller constraints, which do not let it move across that axis of symmetry, but it does allow it to slide along that axis of symmetry. All right, and that's it. So now we can go ahead and move on to our reflection questions. And so the first question is, which four conditions must be met in order for symmetry to be used? The next question is, what gets halved along the axis of symmetry if symmetry is to be used? And then the final reflection question is, what type of boundary conditions are used to enforce symmetry along the axis of symmetry? And that concludes our introduction to symmetry using truss elements.